Good morning everyone. How are you today? I hope you're well. I hope you're a bit cooler than me. Oh my goodness, it's so hot. It's ridiculous. We're still in spring. We're in May. The last week, 10 days or so, it has been Oh my goodness, well, put it this way, it has not been ideal weather for digging. High 20s plus every day, and I've got quite a lot of coverage on today because, you probably can't see that, yeah, I really, I've, I've really caught the sun all week. I put my creams on, all that, do my hat, I'll have my hat on when I'm out in the garden, but not just at the minute while I'm speaking to you because it's too low. So yes, it's been far from ideal, but <laughs> I'm going to take you out there in a second. Okay, so it's a week since I last caught up with you all. It is a week and three days since my compost arrived. My goodness, what a difference a week makes, and I hope you'll think so too when I show you the garden in a second. So if it's a week and three days since the compost arrived, it's about two weeks <laughs> since I sat outside the shed crying, thinking I can't do it, can't do it this year. Anyway, um, through sheer willpower and total determination, I'm getting there. And that's also partly because I put, I, I made the decision last week when the compost arrived to give myself this last two weeks of May to blitz the garden and just really push on, see how far I could get and, and, and pretty much leave absolutely everything else in my life on hold. So I haven't been doing any needle and thread sewing. Uh, what other things do I get up to? Yeah, I just basically haven't been doing any of that, just focusing on the garden. And I'm now... <laughs> so sweaty. I'm now at the stage where I can do some sewing. Yay! So today I'm going to be doing um, some lentils, some cocoa de pampol direct. I've never sewn them direct. Normally I would start my cocoa de pampol in the middle of April and by the end of May, sorry, I would start them in the middle of April in pots in the cold frame. And then by the end of May, the broad beans would be out and they would go in. However, because the broad beans didn't do so well and I ended up having to do a spring sowing, they're still coming. Um, so I'm going to do some direct. I've also done some in pots. I'll show you that in a second as well. This might be a bit of a bumper edition today because I want to catch you up on everything that's happened in the last week. Plus do some sewing with you today. So yes, Coco de Pampol. Then my beautiful burr do rock and core. Where am I? Oh yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, the burr do rock and core. That is my beautiful waxy bean that I um, grow for eating the whole pod. So I, pardon me, I eat these fresh over the summer. The vast majority of beans I do, I do for saving them either dried or fro frozen demi-sec to see me through the winter and the spring and the early summer. <clears throat> I will also be doing my chickpeas. It's my protein day today. And a few more calendula on the end of that bed. I'm also going to be doing some fennel. I'm also going to be doing some chard, some beetroot, some spinach, some various little salad leaves, what have you. So yeah, a big push for catching up today. Now, all of the beanie things I'm going to sew today, historically I've sewn them generally in about the second week of May. So I'm only sort of two weeks late on sewing them. The salady type things I generally sew around about now anyway, because it's about now that all the beds historically have been ready. Um, so actually I feel like I'm getting myself back on track and... The, I think the climbing beans in particular, I think they are going to be later this year. Still haven't finalised, finally finalised where my beans are going. Am I doing arches? Am I going to do rows? I'll decide that over this coming week. I've started some climbers in pots. Now again, normally I would start my climbers direct in the soil. 
around about the beginning, second week of May. I do a few in pots as backup because invariably with the direct sowings I lose some to slugs. However, this year, well, I've done a load in pots and then once I've decided, basically I'm going to push on with the rest of this week, you'll see in a second when we go out, uh, to get beds prepped and spaces prepped and then I can make my final decision. I think, I think I am going to see if I can do my beam arches over the paths again because it frees up so much bed space. I was thinking oh I won't have time to do the structure and it's much easier to do the you know this sort of triangular long triangular rows most of us do where we sort of overlap the poles at the top sideways on there's a pole going through the top. I thought I could do that in my top bed but then I suddenly thought well where am I going to do my squash? Where am I going to do my salads? Where am I going to do this, that, the other? So I think I'm going to push on and see if I can do the beam arches over the paths again. Because it's pretty too and it'll make me happy. So, okay, that's all to come. I'm going to take you out there in a second. A few thank yous first. I've had some lovely cards. Um, a little coot. I don't want to show a dress at all. No, it's my PO box dress but look it's from Malta I've never had a postcard from Malta I've never seen a Maltese stamp so I don't know what your first name is but your P <laughs> I, I, oh, my tummy grumbled Aquilia anyway thank you I loved that I love to get a little postcard a little chatty postcard and then look at this it says, Vivi, a little extra sunshine just in case you need it. Long distance hugs from Corrine. Thank you, Corrine. That's lovely. I'm going to have to make some space on my board, aren't I? Not sure where they're going to go. And then, oh, yes. Um, massive thank you to Hilary. Um, <laughs> look, it's like a little baby poppy. Hilary sent me some fabric that she's not going to use. Oh, it's gorgeous, it's so my taste. And literally, um, as soon as I started opening the bundle, straight away I was starting to put fabrics with fabrics in different combinations of colours and patterns. And I was like, oh, I want to get on the sewing machine. And I thought, nope, garden, 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 garden. I'll get back on the sewing machine in a couple of weeks or so, in a week or so. Oh, and then look at this one. This is from Nora. Isn't that adorable? Look, it's got, I don't know if you can make out in the three dimensions, it's got little reels of lace on there. So sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Um, so yes, I love getting cards from you guys. So sweet. Thank you. And then just before I go out, the last word on the original compost situation. Um, Well, I have given them, them so many chances, so many chances, and uh, I have, I've emailed them again. Um, I mean, I was going to say, look, just cancel my order, I want a refund, but I've given them another chance. I've said, look, if you can get it to me, get it to me, fine, I'll use it somewhere, but just please respond to me. This is not good enough. So they haven't generic email back saying basically shut up go away if you want to order from us great and I've had more emails with their special offers this week so I've unsubscribed online I need to unsubscribe from the paper catalog because I'm not I'm not using them again because over the last three years I've noticed for instance my seed packets are less than generous my seed potatoes and my onion sets have dwindled you know even three years ago i would have my seed potatoes arrive my onion sets arrive and i would have almost twice as much as i needed always give them away to friends this year i was even thinking oh let me go in on the order with someone else so we can split it well you know what? i'm glad i didn't because 
for pretty much the same as I've been paying every year for the last few years. And it's gone up a little, you know, it goes up 20p, 50p a year, whatever. Um, I had only just enough for me, no spares. In fact, with the main crop potatoes, seed potatoes, I had, I didn't have enough even for me. So, um, I wasn't going to, originally I wasn't going to say who they are, but I am going to now because I don't want any of you guys to go through the same palaver that I have. It is, of course, the Organic Gardening Crapalogue. <laughs> That's what I'm calling them from now on. Organic Gardening Crapalogue. Like I say, they were taken over two, three years ago by, I think it's Dobies or Dobbies. In my mind, I'm calling them Nobbies. Uh, and frankly, not good enough. And I know we've got this COVID situation going on, of course. However, literally every other company I've dealt with, and I've dealt with a lot in the last few weeks, you know, even if it's to say, no, we can't help you, they are they are interacting with me. Do you remember when I was doing that video? Um, must be ten days or so ago, when I was at home and it was a sort of thoughts on video, and it was the day of my meltdown. And even when I was talking to you guys, the phone rang from this local firm who I'd emailed an order to, and they rang to say, "We're really sorry, we can't fulfil your order." How great they had the decency to ring me in person. Now. Look, with these big companies, I don't expect they could do that for everyone. I don't know. But, you know, to just ignore me for, it's now nine, yeah, nine weeks. Nine weeks since I made my order. Anyway, enough negativity and nagging out. Um, I think, like I say, the first thing I do with you now is going to show you where I've managed to get to in the space of just one week. Now, some people, <laughs> the negative Nellies, may look at this now and think, yeah, so what? But I'm, I'm so proud of this because, oh, pride comes before I fall, doesn't it? I shouldn't say I'm proud. But you know what? I am a little bit proud of it because it's really, you know, all my joints, my knees in particular, my knees are terrible, but my both my elbows and both my wrists have also got arthritis. So it's not been easy. So I, I'm i really, really, I'm so glad I stuck at it. So glad. Um, so yeah, someone might look at it and think that doesn't look like much, but when you've got my body, that's a huge achievement. Also combine that with the fact that we have been baking hot and bone dry. Uh, it's amazing. March, April, May, three months. At the beginning of May we had three days of rain. That's it. So basically three months without a drop otherwise. We haven't been officially declared in drought yet but as far as I'm concerned we are in drought. This is a garden in drought. So Without me bigging it up too much and then you've been disappointed. Let's go and have a look at what's happening in the garden in oh the last week of May. <laughs> Giddy up. <laughs> Whew. Just before we go into the garden, can you get a sense from the light of how oh my goodness, how bright and hot it is already. I'm just gonna stand here in the shade for a second, but you see on the table there, that's a load of purple sprouting broccoli and curly kale. Um, prickings out and pottings on I did the other day from someone else's leftovers. This is definitely the year of us all growing extra, sharing out the extras and divvying them out amongst pots which can't be worked because their owners are in isolation. Um, and we've got a couple of plots that have been vacated but with social distancing and everything, we're not actually, or well, the council aren't sending any new people to us to have a look at them to see if they want to take them on. So we're trying to keep them going in the meantime, just so they don't get uber scruffy. This is another, oh, let's step out a little bit more. It's another of the um, 
there's a little tray in the front it's only got three in but behind that's another of my compost bags sort of cut open turned inside out to use as a water tray <laughs> and then it's got two over the top because the pigeons have been menacing people's brassicas already this year ah which reminds me the Taunton Dean ah I think it's on its way out it got an absolute battering from the wind the other day which snapped a load of branches off the pigeons have mauled it, white fly have infested it, but I'm going to see if I can save bits somewhere. Okay, let's wend our way up the path and go and see what's up in the garden. Oh, the birds are lovely. You can probably tell by the grass as well. I mean, look at this. This grass, it looks like it looks in the middle of July after Wimbledon. Oh, Wimbledon. Right then, let me give you a little bit of a view. Ta-da! Oh my goodness, what a difference. What a difference a week makes. I tell you what, let's just come right to the top of the garden. I'll go bed by bed like I would as if I was doing my beginning of the month tour. So, um... Peas. I need to harvest a few of the peas, great. but in front I'm going to be sowing the lentils today. Now I've given everything a really good soak this morning because I couldn't get here last night to water. I don't think it's ideal doing it in the morning, but it's, you know, it's when I was able to do it. And then tonight I'll give it all another soaking. But this bare soil, that is soaked just to start to get it moist in order to receive the lentils shortly. Likewise this bed. This bird is ready. This is going to be the chick, not chickpeas, sorry, cocoa de pampole. Again, I've just watered it just because I don't want to be sowing seeds into a totally, totally dry bed. No point. I've got all my bits and bobs of nets ready for all the different beds to go on here to stop cats and foxes scratching. Uh, this bed's really shaping up. Now... <coughs> I thought I saw signs of the first parsnips coming through, so I've taken the planks off, but oh, not sure. It's not looking great. I may re sow. The calendula is all coming up fine. <laughs> Some of those massive clumps. I may move clumps. This bed is going to be the birdie rock and core and chickpeas. That's had a soaking in readiness. Next bed over, I haven't soaked this yet because by the time I've done the other beds, it will dry out. So I will do that in a couple of hours, but this is going to be chard, beetroot, spinach, various salads. So that's why the compost is there ready laid out as well, because that will be a nicer medium to sow them into than just my bare soil. Because even, even after prepping these beds, let me see if I can give you an idea. You know, that is, oh my shadow, does my shadow help or not? That is pretty pretty lumpy for smowing, sowing really small seeds in and the mesh is there at the ready <laughs> to cover against the cats no change here although actually I should say I have now earthed up the potatoes for a second time um, <clears throat> I probably want to do a third earthing if I can rain would make that easier if it doesn't rain what I'll do is I'll soak trenches between each row so this trench and this trench once it's had a soaking leave it half an hour or so to really soak in then that will help me to uh, 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 scrape up I mean you can get an idea can't you I think that of the ridges so w where they're showing now about maybe eight inches above the level of the path they were actually sown about eight inches below so although they don't look massively tall they are quite deep which is fab okay this is another bed i've prepared oh i remember doing this bed this was last wednesday it was about 33 degrees <laughs> yeah this was one of the days when i really wanted to quit but i didn't again i haven't soaked it yet um but this is going to be half fennel half celery Salary still at home. It's my very last of my seedlings, main door seedlings, to bring down here. Oh, I'll show you the cold frame in a second. But yeah, when 
after I've done all the beanie stuff, I'll give this bed a soak in order to sew the fennel. God, it's going to come out in a couple of days. It's crazy, isn't it? I'm already thinking about getting a crop out before I've even sewn my other crops. And look at these cracks. I mean, it just... Doesn't that just perfectly demonstrate how dry we've been? I don't get unduly disconcerted by the sight of this because this is what happens with clay soil. Okay, no change in these beds. This is onions. Ah, the, the, the carrots, they seem to be struggling. I think it's just been too hot, too dry. I may re -sew, but I have seen a couple of little leaks poking up. Hooray, no change here. And then this bed, oh my goodness. This bed the other day. So this is going to be two rows of tomatoes, two rows of tomatoes, peppers and cucumbers. That was ridiculously hard work. It's still really quite lumpy bumpy. Let me give you an idea. <clears throat> really lumpy bumpy. But that doesn't matter quite so much because I'm going to be putting plants in here rather than seeds. So I'm just going to swing you around. I try not to do it too quickly. Back to that top bed. So I've just got those three beds there to do. That's my vegetable cathedral. And then coming back under where the compost is and the bed in front, those two beds to do. And that's it. And that's for squash. Now I've started taking these out of the cold frame to harden off. Well, to, well, they've hardened off. What am I saying? So in here, this is oh, shadows today. Oh, can you hear how dry it is? This is my fair ozen. That's my paprika peppers. They're looking very well. And next to them there, those couple of boxes. That's my. Du long de long. My last two bags of tomatoes I've brought down today. That's Amish paste. Oh, they're so tall and spindly and weedly. I'm going to show you the cold frame now as well, but just give me a minute. I'm going to take the shade netting off so we can see in more easily. That's there because, well, frankly, if I didn't have it on, everything in there would cook. Oh, I'll tell you what, before I do that, let me show you the deck and her bed. Oh, look at this. What a sight. Look at the colours. Just beautiful. Stops me in my track every time. So at the moment I've requisitioned my path in the middle. Can you make out? So this is all cucumbers. This is all gardeners delight tomatoes. I just thought if I put them there they've got a little bit of protection at night. <clears throat> this is literally two nights ago, but it's now time for everything to come out of the cold frame and toughen up. Oh, look, the scabies is so pretty. So pretty. Right, over here on the deck, it's all go as well. Oh, yes, the Atopcha. Raw, raw. Look at the sweet peas that are coming. I might have some of those away to take home with me today. So these were all sown a couple of weeks ago, brassicas. They're taking their time. Some have come up, some have come up really well. Others are, can you see, barely just germinating. Oh, there's another one. At the moment, it's all about, it's fighting to keep everything moist. The flint corn, you see it's starting to look a bit yellow. It really needs to go in. So that is gonna follow the garlic. That's a job for next week. <gasps> the bean department. As far as the eye can see. Yay! So these are the <clears throat> backup cocoa de pampol. I decided to pop in just in case I didn't get the bed ready for another sort of two, three, four weeks. I thought they could all come on in here. So I think I'm going to have masses this year. Well, I hope so. So that's the cocoa de pampol. <clears throat> In here, sewn oh, a week later, no, a couple of days later. This is the Coco Sophie, and I'm just see. Look, I'm so naughty. <laughs> it's just starting. 
And then we've got pots and pots of Gigantes. And over there, pots and pots of Bolotti. And at the back there, pots and pots of Trail of Tears. That's loads of Trail of Tears. And then over there, pots and pots of Helda. So fingers crossed, they all start to come on and, well, I've got plenty of time now to get the bed sorted before I need to plant these out. <clears throat> the, the potatoes I'm doing in the grow bag, well, the compost is right to the top now, <laughs> so that's it. They're not going to be earthed up anymore. Now let's have a look at this Taunton Dean issue. I'm going to be right into the sun, I beg your pardon. But I lost a whole load of branches from here in the wind. And you can see what's happened in the top. I mean, look, absolutely. Oh God, that's even worse today. It's been packed to smithereens. Never had this issue before. Oh, and I had, there were some flowering stems. I was letting it go to flower because I was going to try and get a seed. Have they all, all the flowers have been pecked off. Oh, so I've got one sort of healthy-ish looking bunch down here. I'll have to try and take some cuttings. But it's also been hugely colonised by whitefly as well. So literally in the space of, oh, even just two weeks, I've gone from having, well, you can see if I step back, but I've gone from having a monster plant that was like, it's way out here. It's decimated. Yeah, I need to get a cutting pronto. But rhubarb's doing all right now. And the grapevine is growing nicely. Oh, ladybird larvae. Let me see if I can get them right in there. Come on, eat all those nasty little white flies. Yay. Right, let me show you the cold frame. Right, shade cloth off a little bit easier. So, in the big tray on this side, it's all my different types of tomatoes. I've got an unknown orange cherry. I've got the Get Stuffed. I've got Rose de Ben. I've got Gardener's Ecstasy. I've got Gary's Gorgiosity. <laughs> Um, I had a jolly big sort out of the cold frame the other day, so hopefully they've now all got a little bit more space and they can hopefully, hopefully start greening up and toughening up. But let me take you around the other side because I started my experiment that I promised myself. Well, first of all, on this side, it's all down this side, it's, we've got various squash, this is my orange bell peppers. They can come out and stay out tonight, I think. This is all, I think this is all the Waltham butternuts. None of my trombuccinos um, germinated. Mm, never mind. These four peppers here are my orange bell experiment. And come this way, where I nipped out the tops to bifurcate them. This one already has had a flower. But I don't know whether, oh, I don't think it was pollinated because I had a flower on indoors at home. But this is what I want to show you. Oh, sorry, wobble, wobble. You see this big grow bag sitting inside a bit of a old compost bag for catching water with my two loofah. And they're going up their little sticks. And hopefully in time they will meet. I don't know if you can make out this strings going up. Now, can you see this? It's just a little bamboo pole that I've slung under the apex of the cold frame. The idea being, this will stay in here the whole summer. During the summer, the windows can be open, otherwise it'll get too hot. But as we go into autumn, I can close it all up and hopefully keep enough heat in for these to come to something. So yeah, that pole is slung all the way down to that end of the cold frame and I'm hoping, hoping, hoping to get a couple of loofah to slightly more maturity this year. It's um, this idea 
is born off the back of that lovely visit to Kew Gardens I had last autumn with Richard and Paul for Richard's birthday and I saw the loofah in the one of the palm houses, the little lily house and it was nice and warm and steamy in there so I thought yeah let's try and keep it moist, keep the humidity up and keep it warm. But yeah within the space now of Oh, the next, well, over this coming week I'm going to finish the beds. So then in the first week of June, all, all of this lot will be planted out. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine it still. It's so hot that I can't imagine doing anything other than sitting down and drinking cold beer. But yes, my lovely friends, in the space of a week, that's where I've managed to get so like I say, to some folk it will look like nothing much at all. But any of you who have clay soil and dodgy knees will know. This is fantastic. Oh my goodness, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. And it's so lovely to now start to see the seedlings having their first night or two outside and surviving. Yay! And, uh, and it's so wonderful to see some of these seeds germinating too. So, yes, let us be hopeful for another gorgeous year in the garden, even if it is a little bit tardy. Gosh, I've just looked at the time. I didn't realise um, how long I was going to be out there showing you around and catching you up. I thought there was going to be like, oh, two minutes to show you the garden. Let's do some sewing. Anyway, the point is, this video, <coughs> excuse me, this video has gone on forever. So I think what we'll do is we'll call it a day on this video and let me do all the seed sowing separately. Um, yeah, I'll explain why when we come to do the seed sowing and I'll try to keep that a bit shorter and sweeter. <laughs> But look, I was just really excited to show you the garden and, and what I've managed to achieve in a week. And I hope, I hope, I hope by doing that, that gives you some faith and encouragement too for any of you who, um, who feel like you've been struggling this year. I know, for instance, that uh, just because of, you know, messages you've sent to me and photographs of your plots that quite a few of you had been away from your plots for quite some time because of lockdown, you know, some councils decided to close their sites and they just reopened or some of you were ill, shielding, what have you. So I know that a few of you are just getting back into your allotments now and are probably feeling very similar feelings to those I had two weeks ago of thinking this is insurmountable it's not doable um so you know what I just want to say it is it is just about doable it's hard work but it's doable and um if you don't mind spending the day sweating <laughs> um definitely doable but the other really important thing to remember is so much of what I'm sowing in the next few days, beans, all the salady, leafy type things, all of these things, we can sow, we can sow these all the way through June. So if if you're you know, if you've only got one bed ready, stick something in it. But over the next couple of weeks, maybe you can get two or three more beds ready and pop something in them. It is doable. Trust me. Alright, my lovelies. I will see you very soon for a seed selling video. <laughs> After having had no videos at all for ages, you're just going to get absolutely bombarded with them from me. Um, but it's nice to share, isn't it? Alright, my lovelies. Until I see you again, please take care of yourselves. Try to make the most of whatever time you can in your gardens. And um, just enjoy what is working. Ignore the rest. Until the next one. Bye for now.